In this question, a student attempts to draw a Lewis diagram to represent O2. And we can see the diagram shown on the right. Our goal is to figure out, is this diagram correct or incorrect? Okay, so first let's just take a look at the features of our diagram. There are two different things shown on here. One of them are, is covalent bonds. So you can see these lines drawn in between our atoms. Those are covalent bonds. And each covalent bond contains two electrons. So one covalent bond contains two electrons. The other thing we have in our diagram are electrons shown in green. So we've got one pair of electrons here, one pair of electrons here, one pair of electrons here, and one pair of electrons here. So the other thing shown are electron pairs, and one electron pair equals two electrons. So that's what we're seeing in our diagram. Now our goal in figuring out if this is correct or incorrect is to have a look at two things. One is the number of valence electrons shown on each of our atoms. So we've got two oxygen atoms here. We want to make sure they have the right number of valence electrons. The other thing we need to look at is the overall molecule and we need to make sure the total number of valence electrons on the whole molecule is correct. So let's first go and have a look at our periodic table. And we're looking for oxygen. Here's oxygen. Oxygen is in group 16. So we know from our shortcut that means oxygen has six valence electrons. So going back to our question here, one oxygen atom has six valence electrons. So in this question, we have two oxygen atoms together forming a compound. So if we have two oxygen atoms, we should have 12 valence electrons in total. So that's our first thing that we're going to check. We can fill that in our table down here. In our total molecule, the total valence electrons required, that's how many we need, is 12. Because we've got two oxygen atoms, each oxygen atom brings six valence electrons with it, so we need a total of 12. So let's go and count our valence electrons on our whole molecule. So we've got one pair here. That gives us two electrons so far. We've got another pair here, that's a running total of four. Another pair here, that's a running total of six. Another pair here, that's a running total of eight. Then we've got this covalent bond here, that provides two as well, that's a running total of 10. Finally, we have this covalent bond here, that's a running total of 12. So in total here, we have 12 electrons shown on our diagram, that's 12 valence electrons. So we can fill that in on our table. And we can notice the number of valence electrons shown on the diagram is equal to the valence electrons required. So that's telling us this part of the diagram looks good. The number of valence electrons shown on the diagram matches the number provided by two oxygens. Okay, next step is to look at each of our atoms in our diagram individually. So let's first look at this oxygen atom here. That's oxygen atom one. You can see the label on it there and the label in our table. So we know oxygen has six valence electrons, but according to the octet rule, oxygen wants to have eight valence electrons. So our goal when we're forming a compound is that all of our atoms will be able to obey the octet rule. So we're looking to obey the octet rule, which means we want eight valence electrons for each atom. 
remember there is one exception which is hydrogen only needs two valence electrons. Since there's only two electrons in that first energy level. Okay, so we want each of our oxygens to have eight valence electrons. So let's add that to our uh, number of valence electrons required. They should each have eight in order to be obeying the octet rule. So let's count them on our diagram now. So I have one electron pair here. That's two electrons so far. I have another electron pair here. That's another two, so a running total of four electrons. I have one covalent bond here. That provides two electrons as well, so a running total of six electrons. And I have another covalent bond here. That's another two electrons, so a running total of eight electrons. So this part looks great as well. We've got eight electrons shown on our diagram for oxygen atom one, and we need to have eight electrons in order for it to obey the octet rule. So that part is also looking good. Finally, let's check out the second oxygen atom. Again, we're counting our valence electrons on this atom. We want a total of eight so that it can obey the octet rule. So we've got one pair here, that's two electrons so far. Another pair here, that's another two electrons, so a running total of four electrons. We've got another pair here in our covalent bond, that's another two electrons, a running total of six. And another pair here, so that's another two electrons, a running total of eight. So again, we've got eight electrons for this oxygen atom, oxygen atom two. So that's also looking good because we want it to have eight valence electrons so that it can obey the octet rule. So this diagram, we've checked everything we need to check. We've checked each atom to make sure it obeys the octet rule. And we've checked the total molecule to make sure the total number of valence electrons equals the number provided by the atoms in that molecule. So this is a correct Lewis diagram. In this question, a student attempts to draw a Lewis diagram to represent C2H2. So we can see on our diagram, we've got two carbon atoms and two hydrogen atoms. Again, we're following the same steps. We wanna make sure that every single atom in our diagram obeys the octet rule. And we wanna make sure we have the total number of electrons correct. So let's check off our individual atoms first. So I'm gonna start by looking at this hydrogen atom here. Now for the octet rule, hydrogen only needs two valence electrons. Oh, I forgot to write that here. Only needs two valence electrons. So hydrogen atom one needs two valence electrons. And let's count. All we have here is one covalent bond. One covalent bond provides two electrons. So we've got two electrons on this hydrogen atom. That one's looking good because the number on the diagram matches the number required to obey the octet rule. Let's look at this other hydrogen atom while we're at it because it's actually the same as this first one we can see. It also just has one covalent bond, which represents two electrons. So our other hydrogen atom also needs two and has two. So both of those are looking good. Next, let's look at carbon atom one. So carbon, according to the octet rule, needs to have eight valence electrons. Now let's count the electrons we have. We've got one covalent bond here, that provides two electrons. We've got one pair of electrons here, that provides two more electrons for a running total of four. Then we have another covalent bond here, that provides two more electrons for a running total of six. And one more covalent bond here, that provides two more electrons for a running total of eight. So we've got eight valence electrons for our carbon atom, which is great because that's the same as the number required for the octet rule. So this first carbon atom is looking good. And let's look at our other carbon atom. We can see it's, again, it's the same. We've got one, two, three covalent bonds providing six electrons in total and one pair providing two more electrons for a total of eight. So both of our carbon atoms need eight valence electrons to obey the octet rule, and we have eight shown on the diagram. 
our last step is to check that we have the correct number of electrons in total that would be provided by two carbon atoms and two hydrogen atoms. So let's go and look at our periodic table and let's find carbon and hydrogen. So here's carbon. Carbon is in group 14. So according to our shortcut, that means it has four valence electrons. Then let's find hydrogen. Hydrogen is all the way up here. And hydrogen is in group one, which means that it has just one valence electron. So we have hydrogen that has one valence electron, carbon that has four valence electrons. So in total here, we've got two hydrogen atoms and two carbon atoms in our molecule. So we should have two times hydrogen and two times carbon. That should give us two valence electrons in total from our hydrogens. And that should give us eight valence electrons in total from our carbons. That gives us a total of 10 valence electrons. So we should have 10 valence electrons in total on our molecule. Now let's go and count them. So we've got one covalent bond here. That gives us two electrons. We have a pair here. That gives us another two electrons for a running total of four. We have two covalent bonds here. That gives us another four electrons for a running total of eight. We have a pair of electrons here. That gives us two electrons for a running total of 10. And one covalent bond here, which gives us two more electrons for a running total of 12. So shown on our diagram, we have a total of 12 valence electrons. Let's fill that into our table. Okay, so now we can see the number of valence electrons shown on the diagram does not match the number that would be provided by two carbons and two hydrogens. So this part does not look correct. So even though all of our individual atoms look good and they all have the octet rule um, passed for each of those atoms, overall on the whole molecule, the number of electrons is not correct because it needs to match up with the number that would be provided by those atoms. And on our diagram, we have two extra electrons and we have no way to account for where they came from. So this diagram is incorrect. So when we're looking at analyzing these, there's the two things we're looking at. We're looking at the valence electrons on each atom individually. They all need to obey the octet rule. Then we're looking at the overall molecule and the total number of electrons that we have because that needs to match up with the number provided by each of those atoms, which we can figure out from the periodic table.